Hi there, Scarlett. So I'm very happy to see that you um, have signed up for the online course. That's wonderful. Let's get straight into this first set of essays um, as part of the course and see what you wrote. The first essay is about schools and if they should be more entertaining. So let's see what you said. It is true that the major purpose for schooling is to deliver class, facilitate learning, and promote students in some social emotional development. While some people argue that demonstrating knowledge should be the only goal of schooling, I tend towards the viewpoint that a quality class should involve a reasonable amount of amusement for the optimal results of teaching and the well-being of students. Okay, so on the whole, I like this really a lot. I thought you did a nice job with it. Um, there are a couple of things that I want to change, but nothing too, too serious. Let's take a look at what you could have changed here. So first of all, it is true that the major purpose uh, of schooling is to, this is awkward, we don't say to deliver class. Instead, we say to deliver lessons or to promote learning or to, um, you know, develop knowledge. So these are all collocations that work um, here, but to deliver class does not, okay? And then we don't say social emotional, we say socio emotional usually. So it's like a it's like a socio, so O instead of an AL, and usually a dash um, in those two words. Um, and then this was a little awkward too. I tend towards. We don't as we say I tend to believe or I tend to support or I um maybe I lean towards the viewpoint that that would have been okay but this um I tend towards felt also a little awkward to me all right so um the rest of it was fine I liked what you wrote so it was just those little details um so just kind of cleaning those up really would create a stronger introductory paragraph and it's important to have a strong introduction because uh it's essentially the examiner's first impression of your writing you want it to be a strong one you want it to be an accurate one so let's move on on the one hand an interesting class can help students become powerful learners to actively engage students and improve the teaching quality educators cannot neglect the importance of effective mm, the importance of an effective teaching approach as it has a critical, critical effect on the results. Adding entertaining components into the class is one of the valuable methods that teachers can use. To take Finland as an example, experts claim that carefully designed courses with creative playing activities help develop students' qualities such as attention span, perseverance, concentration, mm and concentration, which are strong indicators of academic success. Therefore, making the class more interesting for students is beneficial for hand enhancing learning um, efficiency. That's lovely. That's a really nice paragraph. Um, you didn't get into too many details about how the entertainment would occur, but it didn't matter. You um, supported it really well. So I thought it was a very well-written paragraph. Really nice job for your first um, essays as part of the course. Very nice. So let's move on. On the other hand, a class that comprises entertaining factors can contribute to pupils' uh, well-being and mental health. Let me see that again. As students spend up to one-third of the time in school, if they have negative, stressful, and anxious emotions when they are in school, it will absolutely affect their mental health largely. All right, that's a little awkward. It will absolutely affect their mental health largely. It's a little strange. It will absolutely affect their mental health. Full stop. For example, South Korea has the highest youth suicide Mm, youth suicide rate, because here youth and suicide are acting like adjectives, so you don't put in plural there, um, in the world because their schools are extremely results oriented. You could have said result oriented. That would have been okay as well, or result focused. While the negative emotions like stress and anxiety were neglected, which lead to severe consequences. Thus, making school a sympathetic, positive, and relaxing place with entertaining activities is beneficial for students' well-being in the long run. All right, this paragraph is also good. I liked it. Um, I was confused in the beginning of this paragraph, which is why I told you I wanted to reread a, a little bit. I didn't understand why you have on the one hand and on the other hand. That didn't make sense to me. The reason why is because we use these expressions when we want to, to show two sides of an argument. So in other words, if you wanted to show why entertaining classrooms are really important, 
you would have said on the one hand, and then you would have explained it. And then in the next paragraph, you want to show uh, how this can also be very detrimental. You would start that paragraph with on the other hand. So that's typically how we use these two. You didn't really do that. I mean, you were essentially talking about two sides of the same side. Does that make sense? Or two aspects of the same side. So here you were talking about how interesting classes and entertaining classes help students learn better. And then here you were saying how it really fosters mental health. For that reason, these linkers were kind of inappropriate. And that's what confused me when I began this paragraph. I was like, well, wait a minute. Are you really arguing different sides here? You're not. You're just arguing different aspects of the same side. So you're probably wondering, all right, Ellen, well, what could I write instead of these? Well, you could have write to begin. And then um, sometimes, honestly, no linker is even better. Honestly. Um, and I know that sometimes IELTS students have a hard time wrapping their head around this, but it's true because sometimes too many linkers are a bad thing. So I would suggest. Um, Nothing, or you could say another side worth considering is that, okay? And there's no real linker there. You're, you're linking the ideas in a different way. So that's one thing you could, you could consider, all right? So another argument worth considering is that classes that comprise entertaining factors can contribute to people's well-being and mental health, you see? So there's no uh, linker per se, but you're still creating cohesion. All right, let's move on. In conclusion, there is no harm in adding an adequate amount of entertainment in schooling to fully engage students in the class and make a positive, wait, there's no harm in adding and making a positive influence on the well-being because you're saying there is no harm in adding and there is no harm in making. So that's how you would want, <clears throat> excuse me, that's how you want to do that. Okay. So, um, I thought this was great, actually. I thought this was a really nice beginning, uh, definitely a nice, strong start to the course. Um, so keep at it. You're doing well. Uh, let's take a look now at your second essay about doing an enjoyable activity with a child. It is true that reading can facilitate the development of children's intelligence quality. Mm, you know what? Skip quality. We don't really say that, intelligence quality. We just say intelligence. Um... So, or if you wanted to use the, the full expression for the word, I, the, the abbreviation IQ, you could have said intelligence quotient, but really no, just say intelligence and it's fine. So while some people argue that an entertaining activity can cultivate creativity and other outstanding skills better than reading, I believe that both reading and pleasant activities are necessary for children's progress. Excellent. So, um, reading is beneficial for children's general cognitive development. For example, when reading an article describing a place that children have never been to, they can be triggered to use their imagination and picture the place in their mind. This is a natural procedure happening in children's brains, well, it should be plural, when they read, which enhances, careful with your grammar here, which enhances creativity at the same time. Let's see. Okay, fine. Also, reading a book can help with prolonging. It's just one word. You don't need a dash here. Their concentration span. As a vast majority of children are exposed to digital devices now, they get used to concentrating, I-N-G here, uh, because two here is a preposition. It's not, it doesn't introduce a full infinitive. So um, you need an I-N-G after a preposition. Okay. Um, so they get used to concentrating for a short time with strong stimulations. Reading a book, on the contrary, requires the ability to stay focused on merely words for a long period of time. All right, I'm not, I'm not loving this merely. Uh, how about this? Reading a book, on the contrary. No, you know what? It's also on the contrary, which is wrong. A lot of people like to use on the contrary but uh, it has very specific uses. What you really mean to say here is in contrast. It's a much more widely used and much, um, it's kind of more of a catch-all because like I said, on the contrary, it has very specific uses. So reading a book in contrast requires the ability to stay focused. Uh, you could have said here uh, on words alone or uh, only on words for a long period of time. 
That would have been okay. If parents can help children form a habit of reading regularly, they will see a substantial growth in their children's concentration span. All right, that's good too. So you're talking about creativity, imagination here, um, and 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 imagine and uh, concentration. So fine. However, other interesting acti activities can also contribute to children's ingenuity and acquire other abilities. All right. Careful. Acquire is wrong here because grammatically it just doesn't fit. So other interesting activities can help also contribute to children's ingenuity and help them acquire other abilities. You see, you were missing something there. For example, in Finland, there is no academic learning like reading for children until they're old enough for primary school. What Finnish children do in preschools and kindergartens um, are only playing, and those are well-designed playing definitely what and ah and those well-designed playing this is a little awkward with the word playing here definitely promotes all round development leads to the future academic success okay this sentence needs some work so let's look at it let me just highlight it here for a second so what Finnish children do in preschool and kindergarten is only play and that well-designed play promotes all-around development leading to future academic success. There we go. We fixed it. I like that you have this sentence here with that what clause. That's wonderful. It's a nice advanced piece of grammar. Unfortunately, there were some errors in the sentence that really kept it from having the strong effect that it would have had if it were correct. Okay. So another example of engaging, mm, of an engaging learning activity is drawing. Children can not only create freely, but also learn a wide range of colors and shapes at the same time. Drawing can also encourage students to express themselves through their works. Fine. So you're talking about play and how it leads to development in general. And then you're talking specifically about drawing and how it helps uh, gain other skills. Okay, fine, so fine, you definitely had ideas, you covered the topic, there's no question about that, good. All right, so in conclusion, I insist that reading and other active learning approaches are equally important for children's all around, not all around, well, all, all around development. All right, it's fine, it's fine. So, all right, uh, Scarlett, I really like this essay. I thought you did an excellent job. There were little things, but again, there are little things, and at this point in your progress, um, these are, um, you know, errors and, and details that I think that we can easily overcome in a short span of time. I thought you did a great job in general. So congratulations. Keep up the great work. Let's talk about next steps. The first thing for you to do is to correct these essays um, with the suggestions you hear in this video. OK, and then return those back to us. Along with those corrected essays, I want you to send us the error correction list. So write down the mistakes that were pointed out to you and then next to those mistakes, how they should be corrected. OK, so what the correct version is. And you're going to add to that list with every essay correction you get back. All right. It's for your reference so you can learn from it. And then, of course, the third thing you need to send um, is a new set of essays. You can really progress in the course. And you need to apply, of course, everything that you're learning, both in the course and through these video corrections. So go ahead, get all that started. Ideally, you would have that to us in a day or so, uh, so you can keep up your momentum. I'll be waiting for them. Uh, you're off to a great start, so good luck to you.